Thank you, Mike. I think we all need to give a great round of applause to Mike Hawley and the EG team for putting this on. This is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Well, just to give you an idea of what I'll, I'll purport to do today, um, I'll try to talk about intelligence des intelligent designs here. Basically, a little bit about what I do, what's happened in the past, what I do in the present and how I see the future direction developing in music, what I do, the piano, and basically how I do it and how I teach it too. I am a classical pianist and, and a music professor. Basically, it's so great to be here in Los Angeles. Um, I'm based in, I'm going to pull this out just so I can walk around a little bit. Um, it's a special place for me, not only the Grammy, but uh, it's very significant to my family. And I, I thought, you know, when I was listening to all the great talkers, speakers, presenters, <laughs> obviously not me, <laughs> um, I was thinking to myself, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear a little personal tidbit about these people because their work is fascinating. So I thought, well, maybe I'll give you a little glimpse of myself before I begin and also incorporate some performance too, if you'd like. Um, yeah, as I was saying, Los Angeles is a special place significant to my family because my older brother was born here. His name is Angelo. <laughs> but my, my, you know, my parents are great. They're, they're very fair. Next in line, Angeline. Then my, well, two younger sisters, Angelina and Angel. <laughs> oh. Gosh. Well... But actually, um, I wasn't born in Los Angeles, even though it is near and dear to my heart in many ways, more than one. Um, anybody know what a Hoosier is? Yeah. No kidding. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm really surprised because not even Indiana natives really know what Hoosier means. Um, so the saying goes, it's originated when there was a knock on the door and people in Indiana would say, who's here? Who's here? So, you know, I wanted to bring that along because, um, you know, pronunciation, it's, it's, it's one of those things. And you may have noticed that my name is spelled A-N-G-E-L-I-N. -E There's no E on the end. There, there was an E on the end, I, I think. But in Indiana, um, everybody started to call me, as a kid, Angeline. So my parents decided to take off the E, and so hence everybody's now saying Angeline. <laughs> but, you know, one little thing that I know I use to screen out telemarketers is how they pronounce my name. And only my close friends, and now you, because we're all friends here, know that it's really Angeline. That's how it's meant to be pronounced. So, with that said, um, I'd like to move on to talk a little bit about what I do, and I do perform at the piano. Um, you know, I, my background is I have a doctorate from Peabody Institute Conservatory from, of the Johns Hopkins University, my master's from Indiana University, um, bachelor's from Ball State University, which is in my hometown, Muncie, Indiana, uh, graduate from the Interlochen Arts Academy, and I have first prizes from the Conservatoire National Supérieur de Musique de Paris, or Paris Conserv Conservatory, in other words. Um, and I've had a lot of schooling, and I've had so much schooling that I know well enough that I have very little to offer or more to add to what's already been said about our great masterworks and composers of the past centuries. So I really offer what I try to do, what I aspire to. And one of those signatures is I like to make the piano essentially considered a percussive instrument, percussion instrument, because the hammers hit the strings. I like to make that sing. And I'm going to try to give you a glimpse of some tools that I use in my own practice and also what I think about and tools that I use, like I said, in my teaching. The first piece I'd like to perform, I think it's about time that I perform something, is 
by Schubert, originally by Schubert, and it's from the song cycle Schwanegazang. It's called Serenade. Um, anybody know what Schwanegazang means? Oh, this is such an intelligent group. Is this by design? No, just kidding. Okay. Um, yes, swan song. So the story goes that Schubert wrote this song cycle, and um, it was actually, I guess, named Schwanes Gazan because swans typically um, sing this gorgeous, gorgeous song, melody, right before they're about to croak. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, it is a rarity, and Liszt actually is somebody who really brought Schubert's work to the forefront. This was originally written for voice and piano, don't worry, I won't even try to hum along, you don't want to hear that, um, but Liszt wrote this for the piano because it was such a, a one of those prevalent things like the television in, in, the, in the living room thing, and if it weren't for him transcribing this for piano, a lot of works such as this, and Schubert himself, would not have been recognized or, or known today. Just like I think this um, event here, the EG, all the gathering, I'm just so impressed with all the things that I'm learning that I don't think I would have known much about um, quantum physics if I hadn't come here. Um, <laughs> so, w without further ado, oh, let me just have you listen for a few things. Um, for those of you who must, it, it starts out with a beautiful melody. Then, because it's list, we have some figurations which the hands intertwine. And then you'll hear like an echo effect. Some people have said that, oh, it sounds like you have three hands playing. Well, I'll, I'll let you know the secret a little bit later on. So here we go. This is Schubert List Serenade from the Schwanegazan cycle.
Did you like that selection? Yeah. Uh, good. Well, it is, thanks to modern technology, available on this CD. <laughs> So you can hear it again and again and again, but a lucky few of you will be getting this in your prize pack. And thanks to the Yamaha Corporation of America, we also have 20 of these, first come first serve I think, um, have some uh, other copies available. So you have to see me. And I understand there's a nice silver pen that uh, Mike Bates has provided that uh, will allow for some, some of you to enjoy this. Now, you know, yesterday, Jamie Ian Swiss talked about how as a performer or as a magician, we often aren't able to enjoy what we're creating. And often I feel like that myself, even though I think music is so magical, because even if you look at the piano here, and this is very tangible, black and white keys. A lot of, I think, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the piano. You've seen this at least for the past two days. Um, and you, you press down on the key, and we only have basically a fourth of an inch to create so much sound. The tricky part about, technically, on the piano is that once you strike the key, because it is a percussion instrument, it's not like, like voice, like... Um, a wind instrument or even, let's say, a, a string instrument where you can really sustain the sound, you can't really, truly make a real crescendo. So it's all about illusions. All about illusions. And it, for me, it's such a spiritual thing because what we're working with is things out here, up in the air, mixing sound, something that's intangible, something that you can't feel, especially with your hands, but it really strikes it right here, really quick. So... You know, I was so inspired by, by magic, by, by Jamie, that I like to do a little sleight of hand trick myself and, and just show you what can be done on this beautiful instrument. I really did play the first time though. This is me the first time around. This special guest here is a special Yamaha piano and it has its own name, it's called the Disc Clavier. And you see the keys move as well as the pedal. It's pretty amazing. And it's really handy for me to be part of the audience and really hear what it sounds like up there. And also really handy when I'm teaching, because a lot of times the students won't believe that they played a wrong note or, or did something different. Hello? Okay. It does sound like me. Now, this is so cool. Anybody familiar with this instrument? A few of you. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. So if you don't like what you hear, I mean, you can always like sort of fast forward a little bit and, and find those special spots. So that's pretty cool too. Now, I, I, I was speaking to Ian Dunbar, but um, let's see. He's, he's never taken a lesson before, and I, I told him it's never too late. And I don't know if he's here, but maybe I shouldn't embarrass him, you know, before he speaks later on. Could I have maybe one volunteer, and I'll, I'll show you somebody who's never touched the piano in their life. Michael. <laughs> uh, never touched the piano. And I want to show you, and somebody who won't be easily embarrassed, of course. Um, come on up, and I'll show you how, you know, you won't miss, at least, you know, you, well, the audience will not hear a single missed note, okay? So I'd like you to just sit down and start playing something. And cameras, please roll on. Let's get his finger action here. Let's see the technique that you have. Just, just play anything. 
anything, just anything. Re no, really loud, really loud, as loud as you can. That's fantastic. That's what I do for my students who don't need to practice. Oh, no. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that's all I really wanted to show, actually. <laughs> Woo! Thanks, Susie. Yeah, so there is this switch where, you know, you can practice all you want. And nobody else has to know. You missed a note. This comes in handy, and another little personal thing, it's, I, I grew up in a household where the piano was in the living room, that's pretty typical. But my, my parents never made me practice, and that probably is what made me want to practice even more. And so, our, my siblings, we always had a feud as far as, okay, which can be louder, the piano or the TV? So they would just love something like this. So I, I just wanted to show that to you real quick. Now, um, another thing with technology that's been happening um, recently, this summer, I used this instrument in Cleveland where there's this festival for arts and technology called Ingenuity. And um, I was able to use the MIDI, using a MIDI interface uh, connected up to a projection screen. It goes through a computer. I used a Mac, of course. Um, and it was projected and certain notes, the keys can be triggered to project a certain image on the screen. Now, um, just for time's sake, I'm just gonna have them roll a little clip of what we did. Um, if we can roll that, that'll be cool. It's just a short little clip here. And so what it did is basically it triggered an image. doing so much in classical music and my interest especially growing up in Middletown America is to be able to sort of entertain a little bit or add some other dimension so that it really gets people going and it's a little bit hard to tell the sound is a little bit in the back but really the idea was that the piano actually triggered some images that you see and they can really you can really feel you have like a, a, a visual effect too it was really cool because this was using a, um, a collaboration with a motion graphics artist. Now, I think that's enough. We can cut that off um, I, for sake of time. And what I'd like to do is I'll go ahead and play you just a little bit of this Bach Liszt Prelude and Fugue. It's originally for organ. Um, and so you'll see some octave work in the left hand that an organist usually does with her feet. Um, and so here goes.